I was probably, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old, somewhere in there, and somebody asked me, well, what does your dad do for work? And my response was, my dad doesn't work, he just plays golf. I said hallelujah to the 16th Royal Fins. You're getting down on your knees. And it's time for you sickness again. Come on, you're coming what you need now. Jack Nicklaus has long been considered the face of professional golf elevating the game to a standard of excellence that still exists today. Certainly at this stage in history, he has the uh, significance of being the greatest player that ever lived. I love just playing head to head and love playing against people and playing against the golf course and playing against myself, which is, which is what you do in golf. Is controlling yourself as, a, as an individual sport is the most important thing. He was obviously incredibly talented. He had an amazing work ethic, uh, but you know what? He loved the competition, he loved to win, and he wasn't afraid of winning. Jack began his professional career with gusto, winning the 1962 U.S. Open against the heavily favored Arnold Palmer. He would go on to win the PGA Championship the following year, as well as the Masters Tournament, which he would conquer again in 1965 and again in 1966, making him the first golfer to win the title two years in a row. 1966 would also bring him the title of the British Open, completing his career slam of holding all four major championships in golf. He was 26 years old. His winning streak would span many more years and would include 12 more major championship wins, three U.S. Opens, two British Opens, three Masters, and four PGA Championships. Known as the Golden Bear, his illustrious career boasts 73 PGA Tour victories, with the record for most wins in the Masters, and 19 international titles, not to mention 20 hole-in-ones. Through it all, Jack has been a model of professionalism, setting an example for those who, no doubt, only dreamed of following in his footsteps. His dedication to the principles of sportsmanship, not just winning, is what has guided him through life. Through his consummate leadership, he has honored the game of golf as more than a sport and secured a place in history, not only as an athlete, but as an American icon. Jack William Nicholas was born in Columbus, Ohio on January 21, 1940. His father was a pharmacist who moved the family to Upper Arlington when Jack was just eight years old, providing his young son with an idyllic childhood. Like his father, Jack was highly involved in athletics from an early age, and his father encouraged his son's talents in a variety of sports, educating him on the importance of etiquette as well as competition. Sports was something that was in his life. And my dad was uh, not only my father, but my best friend. And, uh, uh, we, we spent we spent a lot of time together, and uh, being the only boy, um, you know, he was pretty attached to what I what, what I did. We go out and kick a football, or we go out and shoot baskets, or we go out and throw a football or baseball or uh, whatever it was. He did it with me. Jack's first exposure to golf was as his father's caddy. In between holes, little Jack would putt and chip the ball unaware of how the sport of golf would affect and shape his life for years to come. My father asked me if I'd like to take some lessons and learn how to play. Well, I took, I took lessons at everything I played. I mean, whether it was football, basketball, baseball, tennis, whatever it was, I always wanted to, always wanted to learn. The PGA Championship was played at Scioto in 1950, and so Jack Grout, who was starting to teach me to play golf, took me in the locker room to meet all the pros, Sam Sneeds and, the, and, and, and so forth, right through the line, and uh, it was a great way to get started in the game of golf. Oddly enough, it was a basketball scholarship, not golf, that brought him to Ohio State University. I think they had a little method in their madness since they didn't give golf scholarships. I think they wanted to get me there to go play golf. The strategy worked out well for Jack personally. His first week in college, he met his future wife, Barbara. We were married in July of 1960. Jack was still an amateur golfer at that time, but he was also trying to play in some of the professional tournaments. Sensing that his natural abilities were good enough to begin his career as a professional golfer, he took the plunge. I just either realistically or unrealistically thought, well, anything he does will be fine. 
we'll be fine. Um, he'll succeed. Never an issue with her. She uh, supported me with whatever I did. It goes into everything 110%, so it was no surprise to me when he said, uh, I want to play professional golf. I want to be the best. I have to play with the best. I just had enough confidence in myself to go ahead and do that, and she did too. At the age of 65, Jack made his final touring appearance at the British Open in 2005. We all had some tears about it, watching him walk across the Swilkin Bridge uh, there at St. Andrews for the, for the final time in competition. It gave me an opportunity to really say goodbye properly, and uh, the people were fantastic. It's a home of golf, it's a place I've won the British Open twice. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty special event. Jack's contribution to the game is undeniable, and he continues to support and nurture the sport through his company, Nicholas Design designing stunning golf courses all around the world. For Jack, it's more than a new way to focus his love of golf. It's a way to uplift communities and improve the quality of life by attracting growth and development to areas that normally would not have the chance to flourish. We see massive opportunity uh, for golf courses throughout the world and the real estate uh, that's incidental to it as well as uh, you know, the Jack Nicklaus brand, which does stand for excellence and for a very good reason. At present, Nicklaus Design has over 300 courses open for play in 31 countries, and nearly 60 of them have been ranked in the national and international top 100 lists of several magazines, including Golf Digest, Golf Magazine, and Golf Week. This cross-cultural success has helped spread the game of golf to countries around the world, including Russia, China, and Greece, inspiring the next generation of future golfers. Working alongside Jack are his four sons and son-in-law who have benefited from his example, not only in work, but in life. They're involved here because they want to be involved here, not because Dad said you're going to be involved. And that pleases me a lot. We're all running around at a much faster pace and getting more accomplished. I think we're way more efficient. We're having a lot more fun with Dad's full involvement here in the business. It is this seemingly endless enthusiasm and integrity that allows Jack to constantly move forward, using his influence to promote countless charity organizations and causes. As advocates for children's health care, Jack and Barbara established the Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation in West Palm Beach to improve the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of childhood diseases. Their involvement has been very impactful on the delivery of pediatric services in, in our community. In addition, Jack has hosted the memorial tournament at his golf course, Muirfield Village Golf Club in Dublin, Ohio, every year giving proceeds to the Columbus Children's Hospital as a way to give back to his home state. Another charity that's near and dear to his heart is the First Tee. An initiative of the World Golf Foundation, the First Tee organization works tirelessly to integrate the principles that are applied on the golf course into the daily lives of young people. It's a place where they can learn the value of communication, the significance of sportsmanship, and most importantly, that life, much like a game of golf, can only improve with hard work and dedication. I think there are 270 facilities around the world now in about five countries, and it's growing in other countries. I'm very, very proud of what's happened with First Tee. A family man at his core, Jack has celebrated his vast accomplishments with his loving wife of 47 years and their five children, who throughout his impressive career, never wanted for their father's attention. They just made a huge effort to be there. And I don't know, that may be more abnormal than normal. We knew that we were number one in their lives. Uh, they were great role models for us. Always treat people how we want to be treated. You know, be, be nice, be honest, be courteous. Uh, you know, be forthcoming with everybody. And, they'll, and by doing that, they'll treat you the same way. Whether he's championing children's health care, supporting programs for the youth, or helping communities grow and expand through his work with Nicholas Design, Jack Nicholas exemplifies the resilience and heroism of the American spirit. A man who with all of his gifts and talents has chosen a path of service and embraced the opportunity to improve the lives of others. He is a pillar of sportsmanship 
selflessly giving back to the game of golf by using his love of competition to teach compassion and fair play. It is a legacy that will live on far beyond his athletic achievements. I have spent a lot of my life saying congratulations to Jack uh, for all the things that he's done and I think this is just in another occasion where this is something well deserved. Doing things in the right way and leading your life that way is, is, is very important um, and, and also you know as you get older you look back on what you've done which meant you said you can hold your head up. He's the type of man that I would want to be. He's the type of man that I want my children to be when they grow up. He has been such a great role model for for myself, for my siblings, for all of his grandkids, but everybody in our office. He affects so many people by just doing the right thing. And he's walked the right line in life. He's a good man.